particularly, it's very hard to think about time. I mean, Augustine famously said he knew what it was until he started to think about it, then he was uh, perplexed. Yeah. And it's because there's a fleeting present moment. As soon as we've got it, it's gone. So does that mean, in fact, that the real reality is space and time together, the whole space-time continuum? That's called the block universe in some sort of people's way of thinking, and Einstein certainly took that point of view. But that seems to me an extraordinary odd point of view to take. It seems to me that our human experience of the flow of time is not a psychological trick of perspective. It's a fundamental part of our experience of time. Let's describe that blocked universe. It's literally where you have three dimensions of space yeah. and one of time. So you have this four-dimensional block. Right. Yeah. And every event in time or space can be picked out. And it's kind of there at the same. That's right. There's no now about it. The future's yeah. there, the past's there. It's just we, have the, we have the impression that we're moving through it. But in fact, it, it, it's, it's, all there. it's all there. And uh, tomorrow is there as much as, as yesterday and yeah. today. Classical theology of the type that Augustine and Aquinas and so on thought that that's how God knew the world. God was out wholly outside time, looking down on the whole of history laid out before the divine gaze all at once, as they said. So what God saw was the block universe. So yeah. relativity backs up the traditional understanding of God. Uh, well, no, I don't think time. so, because I don't think relativity backs up the, the uh, block universe point of view, because I think that this is wor a world of true becoming. And if it is a world of true becoming, then I believe that God will know it in its becomingness. God has condescended in bringing into being uh, a temporal creation. God has condescended to engage with time. Of course, there must be a timeless, eternal character to God. And time came into being with the Big Bang, as far as we know, and God didn't come into being then. But once God had brought into being a, a world of true temporality, then God would engage with, with, with its history. Does that put God subject to time as if constrained and inferior to time being a superset? I think that God chose as an act of divine self-limitation. In allowing creation to be and to be other than God, God also allowed creation to be temporal. It wasn't imposed on God from the outside by some metaphysical principle, but was God's free choice. Some would say a God in time is less perfect because that means that some things to God have receded into the past and some things in the future are unknowable. I don't think it would be less perfect in the past. God would have a perfect knowledge and perfect recall of the past. And in relation to the future, I, I actually believe, this is of course contentious, but I actually believe that God does not yet know the future. God accepts, if you like, a limitation of divine knowledge as well as of divine power. And that is no imperfection if the future is not yet there to be known. God must surely know everything that can be known. But if the future is unformed, then even God has to wait to see what form it's going to take. That might scare some people because well, it's, it's, a, little, it's well, a little bit dangerous. Yes, it is contentious. But I think that it's, it, it's, it's theologically important because it means that creation is not a sort of play. Mm. It's not, it, it's not a, a pretense. God is, really knows what's going to happen. It's all in divine control and so on. God really is vulnerable, really accepts the otherness of creatures, accepts the reality of time.